Hello friends, in today's video I'll begin with climatic regions. Under climatic regions, we'll study about the most important classification called as Köppen's classification of climatic regions. Along with Köppen, there are various other geographers who have divided climatic regions into various categories based on different parameters. But Köppen's classification is the most practical one and very easy to understand. And understanding this particular classification will help you understand other classifications as well. For General studies, Köppen's classification is more than enough, but if you are studying for optional, in such a case, you need to know about few more classifications which are given in standard textbooks. And understanding this particular concept of climatic regions will be very easy if you have a good depth with the basic concepts of climatology. So I made various videos on climat climatology concepts, so please watch those videos before watching these things. So if you have a good understanding of the basic concepts, all these things will be, a, will be very easy. So in climatology, I've made videos about tropical cyclones, tropical cyclones, wind systems, pressure belts, etc., which play a very important role in determining the climate and weather of a region. And in the temperate region, we have various climatic features like fronts, air masses, and temperate cyclones, etc. So all these things determine the climatic conditions of temperate regions. And in polar regions, we have studied about polar vortex, etc. So all these concepts forms the basis for understanding the concept of climatic regions. So Köppen's classification is a very practical approach where instead of relying on logic, he uses a practical approach based on empirical understanding. So you, he uses the parameters like temperature and precipitation, the obvious ones. And based on that, he determines what kind of vegetation exists. and Based on temperature, precipitation and vegetation of a re region, he has classified the world climates into different regions. So this is the basic classification, like we have equatorial rainforest near the uh, equator and surrounding the equatorial rainforest, there are something called as savanna grasslands or it is also called as wet and dry climate. And beyond that, we have deserts and also monsoon type climate. We see this monsoon type climate in India and Southeast Asia and some parts of Australia. And then we have other climates in the temperate regions like the Mediterranean climate and also we have British type climate, Laurentian climate and South China Sea climate. So all these kinds of climates are being classified by Köppen by considering precipitation, temperature and natural vegetation. Here we can see different types of climatic regions and also we have arid climates and semi-arid climates. So we'll see all these things in detail. In this video, we'll study about only rainforests. In the future videos, I'll explain about all the concepts. So this is the basic scheme of Köppen's classification. So he has divided mainly into six categories of which the five, the first five are the important ones. We have tropical climates under which there comes like tropical uh, rainforest climate and then we have tropical monsoon climate and savanna type climate. Here the temperature is comparatively high. The average temperature even in the coldest months doesn't go below 18 degrees Celsius. I'm talking about average temperature, not the minimum temperature. And then we have dry climates, which is put under the alphabet B. So all these alphabetic representation is to make it make the concept simple. So if you found them tough, then just don't worry about the alphabetic scheme. Just remember about the basic terms of associated with various climatic regions. And then in dry climates, there are various kinds like low latitude, high latitude, dry climates, etc. Here, the potential evaporation exceeds precipitation. So we have less rains and more evaporation. And then the temperate climates are classified into various categories. These are the most complex ones because here the variations are very minute and sometimes uh, confusing. So we'll see these in detail. And then we have cold snow forest climates. So these are climates associated with uh, regions around the Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle and the regions surrounding these uh, latitudes. And then we have cold, extremely cold climates and we have island climate like the climates of Himalayas, etc. and various major plateaus, etc. So these categories are divided into subcategories based on various other parameters. For example, the tropical humid climate or the climate of the tropics is classified into three subcategories. One is tropical monsoon, uh, tropical equatorial climate like uh, the rainforest climate and then we have tropical monsoon climate and then we have wet and dry which is also called as savanna type climate and then we have under dry climates different types again steppes uh, where we find a semi-arid regions and along with that we have subtropical deserts 
etc and in warm climate we'll see the most important one the mediterranean climate and also we have marine west coast and humid subtropical so all these things have been classified very specifically so we'll see all those things in detail you need not worry about this table for now so if you understand all these concepts one by one then all this table will be very clear to you so this is just the diagram for quick understanding and mind maps so we have seen about the major classification so all the humid tropical climates exist within the tropics that is tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and then we have dry climates like the sahara great sandy deserts and then we have taklaman and gobi desert etc all these things fall under dry climates and then we have warm temperate rainy climates under this there comes mediterranean climate and then some parts of laurentian climate and also british type climate etc and then under cold forest climates we see about taiga forests and tundra region etc and in polar climates we'll see about the extreme climatic conditions that exist in the poles and under the highland climates we'll see about the climate of ants himalayas etc so based on this figure we have we can get a basic understanding which climatic regions exists where so we'll see each climatic region in detail so we have subtypes based on wet or uh, wet and dry seasons as well as monsoon that is periodic uh, climatic conditions and also high latitude low latitude conditions so we'll see all these things in detail first we'll begin with tropical evergreen forests or tropical evergreen or equatorial wet climate so the term itself suggests it's a wet climate year long rains so it is called with different name names like the hot wet equatorial climate equatorial rainforest climate this is the normal term we use rainforest climate it is also called as equatorial evergreen forest so these forests are evergreen the trees don't shed their leaves at at a, at a time because of the climatic conditions and then we have it is also called as tropical monsoon broadleaf forest so these different terms can be used you uh, usually instead of referring it as rainforest climate in a multiple choice question they might be terms like tropical moist broadleaf forest etc so you you do not get confused with these terms just try to remember them so the most determining factor beyond this this climatic region is the intertropical convergence zone we know what is an intertropical convergence zone intertropical convergence zone shifts with the apparent movement of with movement of the sun for example when it is summer in the northern hemisphere we have intertropical convergence zone somewhere along the tropic of cancer not exactly but it fluctuates bearing on uh, where, depending on it whether it is sea or continents and then in winter when it is winter in northern hemisphere then we have intertropical convergence convergence zone which is to the south of equator so this particular intertropical convergence zone is the most determining factor when it comes to climates of tropical regions that is the regions between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn we can see the regions of equatorial rainforest usually that come under the congo region etc and also we have brazilian rainforest ecuador colombia etc and then we have southeast asian rainforest that come under indonesia malaysia and new guinea etc so if you see these regions are hugely affected by intertropical convergence zone for example the regions of the central africa as well as the parts of south america see intertropical convergence convergence zone almost during all part of the year even if intertropical convergence zone has migrated by a small distance the trade winds the effect of trade winds will be very significant and the region of indonesia etc here we know that in the western pacific there is an extremely low pressure because of the warm air that exists in this particular region and we also talked about walker cell during our discussion of elinos so this particular low pressure cell here is very significant in bringing year round rains to this region of southeast asia and here we can see even though itcz is migrating based on seasons but this particular region will be under the influence of trade winds throughout the year as a result this particular region will receive rains throughout the year we know about tra uh, trade winds or easterlies usually they flow in this direction they bring moisture from the seas and when they cross the equator somewhere here then they change their direction and bring rainfall to these particular regions likewise we have here also winds coming from both sides can bring plenty rainfall plentiful rainfall for this particular region so let us see about the climatic features of this particular region we know that there are dense rainforests 
with thick canopy a blanket like structure due to the foliage or the leaves of trees which make a very thick layer so here the temperature is uniform throughout the year there is no major variation in temperature for example if it's in in the morning if we, if it's 29 degrees celsius then in the afternoon it would be about 35 and in the evening it would be again 29 even in the extreme midnight it would not fall below 25 or 26 degrees celsius so the temperature range is very very small both diurnal as well as annual diurnal in the sense everyday temperature and annual in the sense year year long temperature the variation would be very very small so 27 degrees celsius is the with very little is, is the uh, average annual temperature and the variation is very very low and the most important characteristic is there is no winter with when it comes to this particular climate because it will it will see year long rains and it is like year long rainy season where we have very hot climate as well as uh, afternoon thunderstorms which bring plentiful rain and cloudliness and heavy precip precipitation is the chief characteristic because of the influence of intertropical convergence zone as well as a uh, trade winds so we have seen diurnal range is very small precipitation is very heavy and the precipitation can vary between 150 to 350 to 300 degrees celsius uh, centimeters and this varies from region to region but on an average this this region receives rainfall almost every month that is uh the average annual uh, average monthly rainfall will not go below 6 6 cm most of the time it will be above 6 cm in very rare cases it might fall below 6 cm so there is no distinct dry season so year long there will be rains it is wet all the time so there is no distinct dry season this is one more important feature along with there is no winter there is no distinct dry season and the maximum rainfall occurs during equinoxes we know what is the equinox and solstice while studying about latitudes and longitudes and rotation and revolution of earth we have discussed about the equinox and solstice equinoxes are when the sun is exactly over overhead the equator then such a position is called as equinox it occurs during march and september whereas solstices occur during march uh, sorry june and december so in india we have the maximum rainfalls which occur during august you can say that uh, somewhere after the solstice condition whereas in this particular region of equatorial rainforest the maximum rainfall occurs during equinoxes that is march and september this is because of the intertropical convergence zone which is exactly over the equator when the sun is exactly over the equator this is a peculiar uh, feature of equatorial rainforest climates let us look at a climatic graph so the questions based on climate gra climate graphs are very popular when it comes to questions on climatic regions so understand these graphs you will find lot of uh, easy questions from this section so we can see we have seen that the temperature difference is very low that is the range of temperature both uh, every uh, daily temperature as well as monthly and annual temperature temperature is very low for example we can see here how constantly the temperature is varying for example maximum temperature doesn't go beyond this particular range 30 to 29 degrees celsius whereas minimum temperature doesn't fall be below 23 or 24 degrees celsius and if you see if you take an average it would be around 27 degrees celsius and if you look at rainfall here we can see no month has rainfall below 6 cm it is given here the scale is given in millimeters so 80 millimeters in the sense it is 8 cm and if you see the rain is year long every month has significant rainfall sometimes a uh, few months might be might have a uh, rainfalls which are low for example this is for a region of western soma which is a part of africa and based on whether it is to the south of equator or to the north of equator equinoxes are the peak uh, so, uh, rainy months vary and few months might have significant rainfall but the least the least rainfall in a month doesn't fall below 6 cm we can see here the least rainfall is 8 cm which is about 6 cm this is a peculiar feature of tropical rainforest and this is one more chart for a place called as bike in indonesia here we can see more equitable distribution of rainfall here again uh, the rainfall doesn't fall below 6 uh, cm for a month and the average rainfall if you take if you consider the average rainfall it is above like 25 centimeters for every month the least is about 18 centimeters so even here the average monthly rainfall is about 20 to 25 centimeters on an year scale it would be around 250 centimeters so here again we can see the range is between 150 to 
three hundred or three fifty centimeters. So here the rainfall doesn't fall below one fifty. It might be well over one fifty, somewhere around three hundred, three fifty. It varies from region to region. So this is the peculiar characteristic of equatorial rainforest. Coming to equatorial vegetation, we know that it is a lush green forest with very thick canopy. Canopy is nothing but the blanket of foliage which creates a layer, uh, which represents as if it is being blanketed by a certain thing. And then there are various other features like a very thick, a uh, dense forest. And in the Amazon, Amazons, the rainforests are called as selvas. Selvas are nothing but a very very thick, dense forest. So remember this term. It can be asked in prelims. And growing season here is all the year round. This simply means that, for example, in India, when there are rains, we see very a uh, greenish uh, environment. Whereas when during the dry season, that is in summer, we see all dry kind of uh, things with deciduous trees shedding their leaves. But in this particular region, there is no such thing called as shedding of leaves at a, a single time. Whenever you look, it appears green because of the continuous rainfall. And when it comes to decomposition etc all these things keep on happening all throughout the year usually decomposition is rampant in wet uh, climates or wet uh, conditions whereas under dry conditions decomposition rate decreases but here as the wet climate persists year long the decomposition rate will be very very high and coming to the kind of wood that is available from this forest it is called as hard wood it is very heavy it doesn't float on water such hard uh, hard i uh, mean hard and heavy wood examples are best examples are mahogany ebony uh, etc there are many other examples and coming to the major occupations uh, one is shifting cultivation which is very uh, common in these regions and the other one is lumbering shifting cultivation we know about uh, shifting cultivation it is nothing but clearing forests and then burning the trees over the land and this burning of trees provides nutrients to the soil and that such soil is cultivated and after few years when the soil loses its fertility the farmer migrates to a different plot so this thing keeps on continuing this is called as shifting cultivation this is one such thing which is degrading or destroying equatorial rainforest it also occurs in various other forests as well and coming to lumbering lumbering is one important occupation of uh, regions of in the mid latitude regions lumbering is also usually found in the tropical regions as well but the lumbering in tropical regions is not as profitable as in the mid latitude regions this is because of the hardwood hardwood we'll see that we, we have next slides i'll explain in detail why lumbering is not a such an uh, important occupation here and then along with the important uh, hardwood trees we also find mangroves where there is brackish waters and we have seen about canopy which is a peculiar feature of equatorial rainforest very thick canopy and then epiphytes are observed everywhere epiphytes are non parasitic species which live in symbiotic relationship with the major uh, big trees here we can see these small small plants which are growing on a big tree it is a symbiotic relationship like give and take relationship nobody is harmed in this kind of relationship and then the undergrowth is not dense because of thick canopy the sunlight that doesn't penetrate to the ground uh, uh, to the lower layers as a result the plant growth at the lower layers is very low uh, that is why the undergrowth is not so dense coming to lumbering i have told that so here the problem with lumbering in these particular regions is that the species is doesn't occur in pure stands this simply means that there are multiple species which occur in the same region so for economically viable lumbering we need to have trees which are uh, which, uh, regions with uh, same kind of species of trees it will be profitable because the same kind of species can be cut at the same time and they can be transported to the same factory or uh, whatever uh, market it is but when it comes to multiple species usually some species are used for different purposes in such a case transportation as well as effective cutting will all uh, cannot happen at the same time uh, due to which lumbering here is not so profitable because of multiple species that is non pure stands and in spite of dense forests countries in equatorial equatorial regions are net importer, importers of timber this is because of the hardwood trees hardwood trees doesn't float so they are very heavy so the transportation is not so economical like in the mid latitude regions in mid latitude unlike in the mid latitude regions in the mid latitude regions we find softwood like coniferous trees and this softwood is very important because it is used for uh, manufacturing of matchsticks and various other cardboards and various other stuff they are very important especially in the manufacture of newsprint it is uh, very uh, essential so it is very soft and very light so it can be transported using rivers so the economic exploitation of uh, coniferous forest is very easy 
and it is more profitable so it is very popular but when it comes to exploiting of timber in this regions of equatorial rainforest because of its heaviness as well as because of impure stands or uh, less pure stands here the commercial exploitation becomes very difficult so it is finally a net timber importer coming to life and economy here the main occupation is shifting cultivation along with hunter uh, hunter gathering we know that hunter gathering is nothing but wandering in the region and collecting of honey and various other forest produce coming to shifting cultivation we are seeing that they simply clear a plot of land and then there after clearing the land they burn these uh, trees so that the soil there becomes fertile with the rich ash and this particular uh, field is grown uh, crops are grown in this particular field for years few years and once the fertility is lost the persons simply abandon this land and move to a uh, new land where they again uh, carry out the same process and this is very popular in most of the equatorial rainforest region and in the amazon basin collecting wild rubber is one important occupation and in congo basin there there are uh, these primitive people called as pygmies and they gather nuts and other uh, valuable products so in the amazon basin the tribes are called as indian tribes or so remember these names sometimes they can be asked in match the following questions and in malaysia there is one more tribe called as orang asli so all these terms are given in certificate physical geography by i don't know what exactly to pronounce that name so you can refer that book or these videos can be uh, will be more than enough so they make all sorts of cane products and export it, uh, sell them in the local markets and the most important thing when it comes to the economy of these particular regions the recent phenomena and the most important phenomena is the plantation boom so there are various commercial crops like rubber uh, coffee etc so all these are all these things are called as sugarcane these things are called as plantation crops and these crops are very damaging to equatorial rainforest because um, to grow these crops they have to people have to clear a lot of forest region and this is uh, resulting in degradation of forest land and moreover we know that the amazons are called as lungs of the earth because of the kind of carbon sink they provide they intake carbon and give out oxygen and this is very important in keeping balance of all these gases but due to destruction of these forests it is a great ecological damage and then there are various regions which are usually affected by this thing called as plantation boom like java and sumatra where these kind of uh, palm plantations are very significant we can see factories in the middle of a uh, equatorial rainforest where the equatorial rainforest is cleared for to make way for uh, palm cultivation and then we have other regions like malaysia west africa where the ghana coast is famous for cocoa production cocoa is used in um, chocolate making and then we have central america here again the petroleum reserves which are found in the regions of ecuador colombia brazilian amazon etc are uh, uh, are being tried by the people to exploit them commercially and uh, this is again a great damage to the region so remember these cultivations i mean which region is famous for which kind of plantations for example malaysia and indonesia have very uh, huge acreage of palm plantations and we have brazil where sugarcane is famous so brazil is one of the major exporters of sugar and then we have brazil again here again coffee plantations are also famous along with that we have malaysia and indonesia so they export rubber actually rubber came from brazil but now brazil doesn't export significant amount of rubber now uh, most of the rubber is exported by malaysia and indonesia so we can see malaysia and indonesia have both palm as well as rubber plantations which is responsible for greatest destruction of equatorial rainforest and then we have ghana and nigeria regions which are a part of african equatorial rainforest so here the main crop is cocoa so we eat all this nestle cadbury chocolates they are made up of cocoa most of this cocoa is exported to markets in america and e europe coming to other factors what are the factors that affect development of equatorial regions we know that whenever a climate is wet it is most vulnerable to pest and other i mean the growth of pests and other uh, dangerous insects etc and also we have a lot of communicable communicable diseases rampant communicable diseases in the regions of wet climates so obviously the uh, very hot and humid climates along with a uh, lot of communicable diseases and also po poisonous insects uh, snakes etc all these things cause a great deal of concern for the development of this particular region so only tribes which have in inhabited this region for thousands of years know how to live in these forests so when a new guy goes there he might die because of 
the diseases over there or you might uh, end up killing the local people because the local people have no resistance to the diseases brought by uh, brought by re uh, people from the different regions so again this is very damaging for the lives of people over there and again jungle being very thick it doesn't facilitate uh, the development of infrastructure like roads and railways so maintaining as well as bu building and maintaining them would be of very high cost so these regions remain undeveloped for uh, since very long years but during uh, 1980s and 1990s due to boom in oil production as well as plantation crops uh, this scenario is quickly changing and coming to the soil of equatorial rainforest we think that rainforest soils are very rich with nutrients because of large amount of decomposition of uh, leaves and other forest produce but in reality all this decomposed matter is washed away by rains as a result the top soil not the complete soil only the top soil is not so rich in nutrients and this particular process where nutrients are lost from the soil due to rain water are under the influence of water is called as leaching where water might carry away these uh, nutrients uh, to uh, to reverse or uh, they can help in perco uh, they can percolate these nutrients into the underground levels so in such a case leaching of soil occurs and this is bad for plant growth and then it takes decades to really replenish such a soil so once a trees are cut down this particular region doesn't help in regrowth of uh, or uh, germination of seeds because of uh, lack of nutrients and also when there are uh, neighboring trees due to shade the uh, plants usually don't grow along with that there is invasive species called as lung grass so remember this name the lung grass so this is one sort of invasive species it is not exotic is it is local but it is invasive what happens uh, when we cut a region it simply grows this particular uh, the destruction of forest gives away to the growth of lalang grass and the whole region which is devoid of forest will now be full with this particular grass which is which is of no use because it is not nutritious as well so no ranching or any uh, commercial activity can be uh, can be conducted in this particular region so it will go like a very dry scr uh, scrub land uh, by destroying the forest and in indonesian island and java here the volcanoes are very active as a result some volcanoes throw out rich ashes and various dust so these uh dust and ashes are rich with nutrients so these particular uh, uh islands are the exception because where the soil is fertile even after so many years and also after the destruction of huge amount of forest coming to livestock here again in the uh, the livestock or the cattle rearing is not as famous as in the temperate regions in the temperate regions we have very soft nutritious grass so there it is the ranching activities and other activities associated with cattle cattle rearing is very easy but when when it comes to this particular region again tropical diseases and various other adverse climatic conditions uh, badly affect the growth of livestock as a result this region doesn't facilitate commercial exploitation of livestock resources here the grass is tall and coarse coarse is nothing but very rough so it cannot be used to graze the animals and it is called as i mean the meadow grass are the most nutritious grass is absent in this particular regions so here the livestock or cattle rearing is not so easy and then even if there are some cattle kept they are only for domestic use they cannot be used commercially uh, and the yield is very low so we know that the temperate varieties of cows and various other cattle are very good when it comes to yielding milk as well as beef because of uh, favorable conditions at uh, climatic conditions as well as various other reasons like uh, the presence of good grasslands but here the grasslands or nutritious grass is absent as a result the beef as well as milk production is very very low along with that the temperate regions I mean the tropical regions have lot of rains uh, especially the equatorial rainforests are very wet and when there is when it is wet it is a famous uh, or a very convenient place for various flies and insects to grow and these in insects bring lot of uh, diseases to the cattle so all these reasons doesn't facilitate the maintenance of livestock coming to life and economy other parts like uh, resources and this particular region of equatorial rainforest is rich with lot of mineral as well as I mean metallic as well as non metallic minerals but the problem like every other rich mineral region here is the resource curse so resource curse is a popular term used to define the way a resource rich region uh, region is impoverished because of 
cronyism and various other factors like uh, you can say politician bureaucrat nexus like in india and other regions for example in chatisgarh forest and other uh, regions of uh, andhra pradesh there is bauxite mining and all the money got from bauxite mining is spent i mean is totally plundered by rich businessmen and other crony capitalists but the local people are impoverished because they are not paid enough wages and their welfare is not taken care of this kind of a situation is called as resource curse where we have a lot of resources but we are not able to exploit them for the welfare of the public so this is very common in african countries and it is also very common in the rainforest regions of all the re- uh, uh, continents we can see how oil plantations and etc have destroyed the habitat of amazon regions and also how plantation crops have destroyed the habitat of indonesia so the local people are not compensated for their loss and it will lead to impoverishment of the local public so it leads to extensive extensive eco- ecological damage so there are various other reasons as you can see here and one of the important one and the very recent phenomena is the oil and gas uh, industry which is booming in the amazon rainforest we know that amazons are the lungs of the earth and if we deplete this particular forest we could be under serious trouble due to global warming so putting down all these concerns the particular governments over there like the ecuador government as well as brazilian government have made huge efforts to extract this oil and gas reserves and this is highly damaging for the nature over there so these are the threats we have seen till now all uh, kinds of uh, things like substi- i mean shifting cultivation along with that the plantation crops and then large scale exploitation of uh, minerals etc all these things are threat to the amazon rainforest so under gs we have a topic called as critical geographic features flora and fauna so you can say amazon rainforest or any other forest would fall under this particular topic so we should know about threats and other ecological related uh, causes and damages let us look at few multiple choice questions areas lying within 5 to 8 degrees latitude on either side of the equator receive rainfall throughout the year so we have seen t- this till now so this statement is right high temperatures and high humidity cause convectional rainfall to fall mostly in the afternoons near equator so at the equator we know that as long as there is intertropical convergence zone the trade winds meet so when the trade winds meet they are uplifted when they converge so this upliftment is associated with cloud formation and intense thunderstorms so usually thunderstorms here occur in the afternoon so these thunderstorms bring good amount of rainfall so the rainfall in these regions is because of high temperatures and high humidity so without high temperatures and high humidity this particular upliftment is not possible and also if there is no moisture there will be no rains so both the conditions are satisfied so the answer would be bo- both a and a are individually true and r is the correct explanation of sorry this is some are the correct explanation of a similar question areas near the equator receive rainfall throughout the year high temperatures and high humidity is a uh, similar question asked in uh, another year oh. a geographic area with an altitude of 400 meters has following characteristics so previously i've showed you few uh, graphs on climatic uh, conditions or uh, the average temperature as well as pre- precipitation conditions so a question this is a question based on that but to understand this question and to answer this we need to know about various climatic regions as well like temperate forest mountain subtropical forest so i'm just giving you an example of how a question could be but we'll discuss about this when dealing about all these concepts so when we come across all these concepts after finishing them i'll uh, come up with this question unlike temperate forest the tropical rainforest if cleared can yield productive farmland that can support intensive agriculture for several years even without chemical fertilizers so we have seen that under shifting cultivation usually trees are cut and then they are burnt so these burning uh, the ashes give lot of uh, richness to the soil or nutrients to the soil as a result they can cultivate these lands for few years the primary productivity of the tropical rainforest is very high when compared to the temperate forest so when we mean what do we mean by primary productivity we know that when the natural vegetation is very uh, rampant or very significant in such a case we have the highest amount of primary productivity in the form of leaves plants seeds etc so obviously the rainforest with very lush luxuriant vegetation g- produces lot of primary productivity and this reason is correct and this particular primary productivity is important in keeping the soils rich but as there is leaching the soils the top soil becomes deficient of nutrients but when they burn this primary productivity they get lot of 
nutrients which they can by using which they can restore the lands so if you look at this question both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of a here some sort of a confusion might exist because of leaching uh, process but if you if you not go too deep and keep it basic then we can easily arrive at the answer a if a tropical rainforest is removed it does not regenerate quickly as compared to the tropical deciduous forest so in tropical deci deciduous forest that uh, the can of i mean the tree density is very low and also during dry season there is lot of uh, fall of leaves and these leaves decompose and give lot of nutrition to the soil and during the rainy season lot of nutrients might be washed away but during other times due to decomposition the soils will be comparatively rich but we we have seen in equatorial rainforest due to rainfall almost every day there is condition called as leaching which takes away lot of nutrients from the top soil so if I, if you look at the options the soil of the rainforest is deficient in nutrients so if you look the soil of the rainforest that is uh, to be precise the top soil of the rainforest is deficient in nutrients so this is one probability and then we have propagules it is nothing but uh, these things called as uh, uh, detachable parts like buds etc which uh, help in uh, asexual reproduction of plants so such things of the trees in rainforests have poor viability so if it just simply means that these things uh, doesn't occur uh, uh, too often as a result the soils are not so rich this is what the point says the rainforest species are slow growing and then the exotic species invade the fertile soil of the rainforest so if you apply logic there are two probable answers one is exotic species invade the fertile soil of rainforest and then the soil of rainforest is deficient in nutrients we have seen that grasses like lalang they invade the forest as a result what happens is it does not regenerate quickly so there are two reasons one is because of leaching other one is because of invasive invasive species but if you see which one is more important it is obviously the soil which is leached that is more important so the most probable answer would be a even d is a somewhat a close answer but still we need to look at the most probable choice consider the following biodiversity hotspots are located only in tropical regions india has four the biodiversity host hotspot namely himalayan eastern himalayas western himalayas western ghats and andaman and nicobar islands so when it comes to biodiversity hotspots in india we have majorly western Hima sorry western ghats which is a major biodiversity hotspot and then we have andaman and nicobar islands which is also a important biodiversity hotspot and coming to eastern himalayas that is the purvanchal hills here also the vegetation is very luxuriant so even this particular place is called as biodiversity hotspot whereas the western himalayas is not generally considered as a biodiversity hotspot so the option 2 is wrong when we come to the option 1 biodiversity hotspots are located only in tropical regions this is not true because certain bio, uh, bio uh, i mean biodiversity hotspot like mediterranean region uh, regions of uh, eastern australia etc fall outside of the tropical regions so so this option is also wrong so the answer is neither one or two so this is a map of bio biodiversity hotspots we can see some parts of eastern australia which would uh, usually fall under below the regions of tropics and also we have uh, regions of mediterranean as well as some parts of california so these particular regions some not uh, the major part but few regions fall under biodiversity hotspot so we can see we can apply this logic over there this is comparatively kind of confusing or a tough question it is hard to remember all these places and related concepts so finally we have talked about in this video we have seen about the equatorial rainforest so we can see where they are present the amazons congo region along with that some parts of nigeria etc and then we have southeast asia where these are very very dense in the next video we'll see about uh, savanna as well as monsoon climates So this is all about equatorial rainforest. Thanks for watching and if you found these videos helpful don't forget to subscribe I'll be posting more videos. Thanks. Thanks again.